All right, we're going to look at the HSL Grayscale tab again, only this time we're going to focus on creating some good looking black and white inside of Camera Raw. First thing to do, just as a beginning step, is check the Convert to Grayscale box. Now by default, if you don't have it set up in the Preferences, all this basically does is desaturate the image. But if you go up to Preferences, and under the default image settings here, by clicking the Apply Auto Grayscale Mix when converting to Grayscale, let me uncheck this. Since this is a raw file, all the color data is still there and it can be retrieved at any time. But with that option that we just selected in the preferences, the next time you convert to grayscale, Camera Raw automatically applies its own mix, which I recommend because it's a great starting point. And you might notice that the grayscale mix sliders are very similar to Photoshop's black and white adjustment. Except for one thing, we now have control over oranges and aquas. So the Camera Raw Grayscale Mix has two extra sliders and colors that we can change. For example, I can change the oranges, the orange values, and make them darker or lighter. I think I'm going to darken up these greens here and all the foliage here. Maybe lighten up the red. And you can see how you can really, really fine tune your black and white. And after you get a decent mix here in the grayscale mix, you can also fine tune it even further inside the basic tab controls to really polish off that black and white. And to get a good feel of where you are, you can always click the preview tab, which will show you your image when you first open it up in Camera Raw and the current settings. It's also possible to achieve a sort of film grain look by adjusting certain sliders. In this case, I'm going to darken these greens here and lighten up the yellow values. And I apologize if it's a little hard to see since this is done on a laptop. And unfortunately, this video will be compressed, but right here in the background, I've got a nice grainy kind of black and white film look to it. And then of course you can always fine tune, fine tune even further, and you can always use the tone curves to give you even more control over your black and whites. And on top of creating awesome looking black and white, we also have the ability to add a tint to the shadows and the highlights independently. So I'm going to, going to convert this image to grayscale here. I'm going to adjust the blues and the aquas slightly. Get it to about where I want it. Then under the split toning tab, which is just to the right of the HSL grayscale tab, as I said, you can change or you can add a tint to the highlights and the shadows independently of each other. To do this, simply start with the tint here. You must increase the saturation, otherwise you're not going to actually see your effect. And to get a good idea of what color you're actually going to tint, if you press and hold Alt, that's Option on a Mac, it'll temporarily show you the color. It basically boosts the saturation to 100 to give you a good indication of what color you're using to apply the tint to the highlight or the shadow. So apply your tint here. The balance slider in the middle will push this, basically allow the tint that you added to the highlights to spill into the shadows as well. So I'll illustrate this a little better as soon as we get some tints in the shadows. So right now you can either just keep it so that it's a single tone or a single tinted image, or you can also achieve some interesting sort of cross process effects by adding a tint to the shadows as well. So I'll add, a, I'll add a green tint to the shadows. Now you can really see what the balance does by pressing the balance all the way to the right. That's basically pushing all of the highlight tints into the shadows and it does the opposite by pressing or moving the slider all the way to the left in which all the shadow tints gets pressed, pushed into the highlights as well. 
So you can create some really cool effects, or you can just basically create a nice sepia or single tone effects on top of the already cool black and white conversion that Camera Raw has to offer.